In this video, I just want to go through how you find your audio files within the Pro Tools session, and how to then consolidate and tidy up the clips window so that when you're moving projects around, uh, you're moving them around efficiently and you haven't got extraneous pieces of audio clogging up your hard drive space. So I've got a project here where I've got bass, drums, and a couple of guitar parts, and you can see they've got sort of different file names and everything. But how that actually looks in the clip window is like this. So down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the little arrow there. If I click on this, this will extend uh, this window out, the clips window, and I can adjust this to actually see how much uh, space you might require. Um, but for this demonstration, I'm going to have it quite wide so you can see what you can do. Uh, the text in bold is the parent folder or the parent file. And then anything that's not in bold are uh, then deemed to be what we call child. Uh, files or sort of derivatives from that parent one. So the drop down arrow ones are all files that are stereo. So if I click on this, you'll see that this here is the stereo file for the base. And then if I click on that, that's obviously you won't see anything highlighted. But as I go through, um, I'm just going to click on then this one, the 07, you'll see that that highlights there because that relates to that file, even though it's all part of this big one. Same with the drums. You've got the drums, which is the parent, the original folder, the unedited sort of version. And then within that, you've then got the two parts there. And the same thing goes for guitar. There's the parent, and then you've got the, what we call the child. Okay. So you can then go through those different pieces of audio. Now, what we need to be able to do is view the audio and the names. So if you want to find out sometimes where the location of that is, we can go up here to the drop down and go to show, you can show the file name, so you can show it in uh, more detail. So that's basically changed it, so it's, it shows me it's a .wav file, that's, that's the full name of the audio. Uh, if I go to show here, you can show the disk name. So it's show me that it's on my server hard drive. Alternatively, I can actually just have it, so it shows me the full file path. So it shows me HD, users, Rob Dwyer, desktop, that, and then the audio file and the whole kind of where it's located. Why do we need to see that? Well, if you're running off multiple hard drives or anything like that, you might need to find and get everything to run to the same uh, disk. Pro Tools is able to run audio from different places at the same time. However, it may struggle later on and it may be difficult if you're then sending the project file folder off uh, for somebody else to mix or edit or whatever like that, or somebody's transferring files to you. You need to make sure they're all in one place. So that's a great way of checking where it's getting all the audio from. So once you've got all that, and you know you've got everything in there, you can also then get rid of the unused files. So I've just gone to that drop down and then selected, gone to the select menu, and then you've got this thing here, and you can actually do it with the shortcut key. So uh, shift command U, selects all the unused files. I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice now that in the clips window, it's highlighted all of the audio that is unused in the edit window. So I can actually get rid of these. Now, I'm going to right click on them. And then you get these a menu with some more uh, things that you can do. And I'm going to click on the clear. And it will bring up this new window. And I've got choices so I can either cancel it and stop doing that now the first thing that Pro Tools would give you and it will highlight is the remove option the remove option is non-destructive all it would do is remove the clips from the session but the audio files will remain uh, within the audio folder within the project the other thing you can do which is not too destructive is that you can then move to trash so basically, it'll take it out of the, the project. It will also take it out of the audio file and place them in the trash so that you can delete them at a later date, should you want to. Or it gives you a get out in case you didn't want to delete that and you want to bring them back in. The other option, which is then the destructive method, is the delete. So, so it says delete selected source files permanently from disk. That means that it's gone forever. So there's no way of getting that back. So it depends on how uh, committed you are 
in most cases, you'd use these two, as I say, unless you're absolutely sure you want nothing to have to do with that at all. And then you just hit select uh, the appropriate one that you want to do, and it will then do it. So I'm just going to hit remove. So now that has tidied up my clips. Now, if obviously I'm working on a big audio project, that could potentially make a big difference um, later on for moving uh, projects around and making it uh, a lot more uh, convenient in terms of viewing and also uh, working within limits. Things like um, WeTransfer, which is a free method of transferring across online that has a maximum of two gig limit uh, that you can send. So if you want to send a project to a, somebody across the internet, that's one way of making sure that your files are within that uh, boundary. Anyway, just to recap, so you can go into here, which then shows or hides the clips window. You can see the file path, which is under the show, and then you can select what kind of file path or disk name or file name you want to do. And by going to the select and select unused, you then got the opportunity uh, to remove any clips um, that are within the project, making uh, your project a lot more streamlined.